Hello listeners, this is Moose Jaw Matt, and we have another episode here on Nature and Science Britain. We're going to have to make this really quick because... Oh, there they go again. I... I will not be able to do anything with this guy. Hey, please come back. Where are you going? Why are you in such a rush? I'll explain more after the theme song. Stay tuned. Come right back. Don't be like this other guy. Just stay here. Listeners, the reason I have to be so quick is because I'm trying to interview the fastest mammal on land. I think you know what creature that is. It's not the Basset Hound. If you guessed the Basset Hound, you were wrong. If you guessed the Sloth, you were wrong again. If you guessed the Wooly Bear, you were wrong twice because it's not a mammal. It's misnamed. They're wooly and they're cute, but they're not bears. And it's not technically wool. They're not mammals. And they're definitely not the fastest on land. If you guessed the bat, you're getting closer. That's a mammal. But it's a flying creature. No. We all know what this creature is. There's none other than the cheetah. Chances are, if you've had any sort of science fair in your school or a report, someone in your class chose the cheetah. They're a very popular animal. And for good reason, because they're the fastest mammal on land. (laughs) That deserves to be a book report or a science fair project or a research paper, right? Right? Well, not only that, but they're pretty cute looking. They're not as vicious. They At least they don't seem as vicious. I mean, I've seen people like petting them. They're not out to get people. They do not have the fearsome reputation of the tiger or the lion. They're a big cat, but they seem more purr, purry. I might be way wrong. I've never met one in person, but I've seen pictures of them. So let's talk about how fast they are because I cannot get an interview with this guy. Hey, hey, come back. Come. There he goes. Goodbye, Mr. Cheetah. Let's give Mr. Cheetah a name. Uh, I I haven't been able to meet him, so I don't know his name. We can call him whatever we want. How about Fred? Fred the Cheetah. Some of you are probably thinking Cheeto, but uh, they don't look very orange and crunchy to me. And that's not very wholesome you know we want a wholesome name for the fastest mammal you can't become the fastest mammal by eating cheetos you've got to eat something like wheat germ wheat germ the cheetah goodbye wheat germ (laughs) we just named our cheetah wheat germ i'm sticking to it you know what i'm the host i can do whatever i want that's the best part well we all know probably how fast cheetahs are, the fastest mammal on land. But did you know they can get to 60 or perhaps even 70 miles per hour? That's according to nationalgeographic.com. Now, in kilometers, for our foreign friends, that's 97 to 113 kilometers per hour. That's faster than perhaps some people have ever driven. Now, the, the thing is, they can't keep that up. It's a short distance. They can only do that in short spurts. Cheetahs usually chase their prey at only about half their speed, though. They need to conserve it for those short bursts. And it says here that a cheetah, after a chase, needs about a half an hour to catch its breath before it can eat. So imagine you have to chase your tacos so vigorously. You're hungry. You're so hungry. And yet you wait for 30 minutes. Can you imagine? You get in line, heat up your food, and you're so exhausted after heating up your food. (sighs) Just give me, just give me a couple, maybe 15 or give me 30 minutes. Okay, just 30 minutes. Your food's gonna be all cold 
by the time you're done. That's the life of the cheetah. Not as glamorous as it seems. Did you know that the average lifespan for a cheetah in the wild is only about 14 years? If you're 14 years old and listening to this podcast, thank you for listening, and you're at the end of your cheetah life. However, if you live in captivity, since you don't have to go around chasing your burritos, they're just given to you, you can live up to 20 years. So that means, uh, Moose Jaw Matt, I won't tell you my age, but you can guess it. That means Moose Jaw Matt, if he were a cheetah in captivity, would have died twice. He would have just had his second death. So you do the math. Cheetahs, oh, by the way, let's get back to the description. Cheetahs, they're furry, they're big cats. They have spots, and on their face, it looks like they have <laughs> like black teardrops. Like they've been wearing, what is it, mascara? I don't wear makeup, so I wouldn't know, but that stuff around your eyes. Someone, some mother is right now correcting me. They're like, no, it's not mascara. It's brr, whatever it is. But it looks like they've been wearing makeup or something and they've been crying and it looks like tears coming down their face. That probably adds to the illusion that they're cuddly creatures, but they're still wild. By the way, if you're in the wild with a cheetah, please don't go up and pet it. That's just Moose Jaw Matt talking that they look cuddly, but I don't know that they are. So please be thoughtful. Their diet right here, it says carnivore. Yes, that means stay away. Carnivore means stay away from them. <laughs> If it's an animal that's a carnivore and it's about the same size as you, don't go near it. Okay, that's what carnivore means. Carnivore is like French for stay away. That's not true. But by the way, they're about three and a half to four and a half feet long. But with their tail, their tail is two to almost three feet long. So it almost doubles their body. They have long tails. And you can imagine those tails if they're running fast and they need to turn. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Here comes Wheat Germ. Go, Wheat Germ, come in for an interview. <sighs> Goodbye, Wheat Germ. Our cheetah friend, Wheat Germ, is gone. Uh, but if they're running, like I just saw Wheat Germ going, they're agile. They're not just fast. They're not like a large creature that can only run in a straight line. They can turn. They can maneuver. That's called agility. They have agility, an amazing Agility ability. You like that rhyme? Agility ability? They can turn this way and that. And what helps them is their tail, their long tail. I think that's why I cannot run very quickly in multiple directions because I'm lacking a tail. I just wasn't designed for it. Cheetahs are really light considering how big they are. They weigh between 77 and and 143 pounds, give or take. So I weigh more than a cheetah. That makes sense though, with their power, their long lengthy bodies, and their light weight, they're able to accelerate more quickly. Acceleration is amazing. Acceleration is when you're changing speed or changing direction. By the way, here's a little physics for you basic physics. Even when you're slowing down, you're technically accelerating. We tend to think of accelerating as going faster, but it also can be going slower. It's the force pulling you backwards that's slowing you down. It's pretty interesting. You might be wondering, where do they live? Can I see them? If you're in North America, not in the wild. At least you shouldn't be seeing them in the wild. They would only be in the wild of North America if they escaped from a zoo. You can see them in a zoo. They're not in South America. They're not in Australia. They're definitely not, not in Antarctica. They're not in Europe. They're in Africa. Southern Africa, some spots in Eastern Central Africa, and kind of in the Northern Central African portion. Africa's huge. There's another continent that surprised me that does have cheetahs. Did you know that there are some cheetahs in Asia? According to the range map I'm looking at, in southwestern Asia, kind of toward the Middle East, there are some cheetahs there. 
I don't know how they got there. <laughs> Actually, I think cheetahs were more broadly distributed, but because of habitat loss, it's the same story across the board. Many animals have suffered as humans have taken over more and more land, and we've not very well done it. Let me rephrase that. We've not done it very well. So these cheetahs, they have this little stronghold in southwestern Asia. There they are, struggling to survive. And yet I tend to think of them as being primarily in Africa. And that's true, but they're also in Asia. So nice job, cheetahs. Two continents. By the way, when we're talking about cheetahs, there are five subspecies of cheetah. The plot thickens. I didn't know. There's the Northwest African cheetah, East African cheetah, South African cheetah, Northeast African cheetah, and the Asiatic cheetah. Well, that kind of makes sense. I guess they're so separated that they they have their own characteristics, their own traits. Cheetahs can get up to that 60 or almost 70 mile per hour mark in just three seconds. Let's compare a little bit. Many of you have heard of the Jamaican sprinter, the fastest recorded man in the world. Maybe there's someone faster that's not been recorded, but at least officially, Usain Bolt. He currently has the record as the fastest recorded man in the world with a top speed of around 27 miles per hour. He can run 27 miles an hour, so the cheetah can run at least double his speed. Almost triple. Wow. Let's do another comparison, shall we? The, you know, the average child runs 8 to 12 miles per hour. We'll just make this easy and say that you run 10 miles per hour. If a cheetah can run 60 miles an hour and keep up that pace for one hour, which it can't, but let's just say it could. It could cover a distance of 60 miles. If you wanted to try to run and maintain your speed, which you probably can't, but if you wanted to try to run 60 miles, it would take you six hours. That cheetah could run 60 miles, get there, eat, take a bath, trim its nails, get a haircut, take a snooze, read a book, and you'd still be way behind. That's pretty fast. Imagine driving down the highway, and you look out the window, and there's a cheetah keeping pace with you. 60, maybe 70 miles per hour. That is pretty much highway speed. Now, if you have a parent right now saying, no, I drive faster than that, then this is an excellent time to say, why mommy? Why daddy? I think you should be driving slower. <laughs> Okay, enough with that. Listeners, you know what? If you did the math earlier, you might know how old I am. I am going out to Colorado to celebrate by running a half marathon. You can cheer for me one week from this Sunday on October 8th. I'm going to be running a marathon. No, a half of one. I'm going to be like a cheetah. Uh, no, 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 that's not true. I'm probably going to be more like the Basset Hound. I will be plodding along. I will be happily exercising. I will be having fun, enjoying life. I'm celebrating life. I'm going to explore my world too by going out to Colorado and doing some hikes in some beautiful areas. I'm looking forward to that time in the mountains, connecting with God, connecting with other people, spending time with my family. Listeners, you are amazing. And speaking of amazing, I would like to give two birthday shout outs that are long overdue. I can't tell you how busy I've been as a teacher and as a father and as a husband, but I wanted to make time to get this podcast episode out before I go on my trip. And I really want to wish these two people a happy birthday. Amelia and Hana. (laughs) 
thank you so much for your support of the podcast and happy birthday to you. I hope you had a wonderful, wonderful birthday and that you've been able to celebrate with friends and family and continue to explore your world. I'd also like to say thank you, Aramea. Fabulous name, by the way. But thank you for your support of the podcast. Speaking of messages, here's one from one of our listeners, Elliot, who has a fact, a wow fact to share with us. The time is yours, Elliot. Hi, Ms. Matt. My name is Elliot, and I just wanted to tell you, I just found this wow fact. Um, it's that, have you ever heard of these? They're called Arctic Terns, and they, uh, they fly, how long they fly, it's like flying from the moon and back three times. I just thought that was uh, really cool. So thanks uh, for doing your podcast. And so I just wanted to tell you that. Bye. Wow, Elliot, that really is a wow fact that the Arctic turn travels that far, that many miles without having to land. It's hard to imagine being in the air that long, so they must inevitably be able to rest while they're flying, which is fabulous. Thank you so much for sharing. And listeners, the rest of you, if you have any wow facts, anything that amazes you, please share it. I'd be glad to hear. There's so much in our world to explore, whether through learning, hearing, seeing, reading about, or experiencing firsthand in nature. Please share those experiences, that those facts with me. I love to hear about them. Listeners, thank you for joining me here on Nature and Science for You. I'm Moose Jawmat. Until next time, keep exploring your world.